Xbox crew. I wrote the TF2 fanfic. Enjoy. The game started as the players rushed out of spawn. The oh, medic team ran out sadly to discover that the other team wasn't there. The heavy said to the medic, what do we do now? After hearing this, the medic proceeds to unzip his pants. The heavy screams out in joy. I love this doctor. The heavy's gargantuan cock is pushed slowly into the medic's tight asshole, slowly stretching wider to accommodate the heavy's raking erection. The medic's moans and groans did nothing but make the heavy's dick harder. Eventually, the medic's anus could no longer stretch out. But the heavy's man meat like a flesh of love. The engineer sees their fun. It got him so hot he didn't know to do it. He whipped out his throbbing junk and started jerking his one eye on the weasel. Unfortunately, his self love accidentally catches the heavy's attention. The engineer stepped out. The heavy and the medic had thought they were caught. The engineer stepped out and said, Erecting a dissing a dissing answer. The heavy continued to plow the medic's ass as the engineer had fallen this with this shit. It lasted over an hour, endless oil stretching and constant amounts of cum, but neither of the three could stop being a rat. The only one who had not come was the medic, and then suddenly, I'm fully charged! The engineer and the heavy get out of the way as he came with such force that the poor unsuspecting scout to leader of cum hit him in the face. The three men began having fun once more as the medic stuck his dick into the heavy's ass as the engineer the TF2 fanfic. Enjoy. Mission as the players rushed out of the well, what did the engineer the do? ran out sadly to discover that the other team wasn't there. The heavy said to the medic, What do we do now? After hearing this, the medic proceeds to unzip his pants. The heavy screams out in joy. I love this doctor. The heavy's gargantuan cock is pushed slowly into the medic's tight asshole, slowly stretching wider to accommodate the heavy's raging erection. The medic's moans and groans did nothing but make the heavy's dick harder. Eventually, the medic's anus could no longer stretch anymore, as it fit the heavy's man meat like a fleshly anal glove. The engineer sees their fun. It got him so hot, he didn't know what to do. He whipped out his throbbing junk and started jerking his one-eyed wonder weasel. Unfortunately, his self-love accidentally catches the heavy's attention. The engineer stepped out. The heavy and the medic had thought that they were caught. The engineer stepped out and said, Erecting a dispenser. The heavy continued to plow the medic's ass, as the engineer had fun with his mouth. It lasted over an hour, endless anal stretching and constant amounts of cum, but neither of the three could stop being a rat. The only one who had not cum was the medic, and then suddenly, I'm fully charged! The engineer and the heavy get out of the way as he came with such force that the poor unsuspecting scout took a liter of cum hit him in the face. The three men began having fun once more as the medic stuck his dick into the heavy's ass as the engineer began having fun with the heavy's dick using his mouth. The scout walked into the room, seeing all the ma seeing the all-man menage a trois and prominently yelled, Need a dispenser here! The engineer looked at the scout who had his pants down and was bent over a desk. He walked up to the scout and began to stick his cock into the scout's unusually tight anus. When he stopped, the scout turned around and started giving the engineer a blowjob as smoke surrounded him. Spy sap in my century! Suddenly, the spy brandished his butterfly knife, cutting off the engineer's cock. Due to the mass amount of blood flowing to that vital appendage, the engineer promptly fell unconscious. Storing the cock of cock in his coat pocket for later, he continued to cut off the cocks of the medic and the heavy, again keeping the members for himself. The spy had fun that night. Crave, we just got stopped right there? What the hell did I just listen to? Crave, make up something else afterwards. Dirty Peter so and the, 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 the long black penis of evil. Read by Jim. Peter was the leader of the boys because he was the dumbest. Or maybe he wasn't. Peter had no idea how to he was, so he gave himself a great slurpy low job and it came dramatically all over his mitts. Oh. 
Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 it oozed over the sides of his trousers. Oh, so gracefully. When his owner was quite huge, the printer was nine inches and a new boy came to say near the tone for wayward boys who said he was ten. Why then Peter would declare himself to be eleven. Fucking inches off lovely fresh man sausage. Medical scar. Also, he could shit it the fathers. That made him the undisputed leader of the games. As leader, he made it his business to take shifts on things in general. Sometimes it's dark, and sometimes light, and sometimes brown. Orange corn fits packed inside, and he was not happy with the way things were shaping up today. As far as his ship goes, so he was straining his ass very hard, squatted above the children, trying to expel very large and solid, fat pooping ship bullets. <sighs> Jets of nigger burishering from his back bottom. Oh, good heavens, my ears are being sodomized! Oh, the dropped out. Oh, Peter held his hand over his nose, turning desperate to escape the eye-watering stench. He fell back momentarily staggered by the odor. How much of that stuff have you got left? Wendy queried. And off he went again. Peter erupted passion. Oh, good heavens, my ears! They've been violated! <laughs> Third one, Drunken Night. When he woke up with a huge headache, he shouldn't have drank that much last night. He was feeling really bad when he noticed it. He was on the nude, and not just that, it was with another person. It wasn't that surprising, really. He had woken with several persons before, but this time, he was shocked when he saw the blonde hair and the face of a very well-known guy. Just right next to him was Butters. He looked kind of cute when he sleep, murmured Kenny, but then he opened his eyes a bit too much in embarrassment oh, and a light blush appeared on his cheeks, God. especially oh, when he saw Butters seem to be new as well. What the hell? Had I sleep with Butters? No, not sleep, had vague sex. I can't believe I had sex with Butters. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. He tried to get off the warm body that was entangled him in a hug with all the care he could not to wake him up. When finally he was off the bed, he dressed up as quickly as he putting on his parka and his hood, hiding his face of anyone. He didn't want to remember what happened last night, be sure that the memories were about to haunt him. It was meant that he want to forget from the start. Hey Kenny, where did you go last night? Kyle said when he go down the stairs. 
why the party had to be in Token's place, thought Kenny, walking down the stairs. And the worst part was that all of his friends decided to spend the night at the house after the party. Nowhere, he answered. Hey, where were you? Where did you sleep? Asked Dan, looking at him. He sure was just too wasted that he kissed the toilet all night, remember? When he was impersonating Beyonce last night, tonight? Kenny, you were f hilarious, said Cartman, laughing hard. I'll just die in here, I'll do a better one. Legless was riding along the woods, and one day he found a baby white and cold. So he got off his horse and went to the baby, and then Legless said, Who left you here, little? Our baby just cried, and then Legolas picked her up and held her, and then the baby stopped crying, and then Legolas said, Your name is going to be Laura. And then Legolas and the baby went on to the horse, and went back to the castle where he lived. Legolas said, Father, Mother, I found this little baby in the woods, and then Legolas' mother got up and walked Dap down and said, How can people put baby in the wood sand to die? Then Legolas' father said, We are going to keep her. And then Legolas was happy for summarizing. Ten years later, Legolas got up and went into Laura's room and said, Good morning. And then Laura said, Good morning, too. Then Legolas said, what's a matter? And then Laura said, Legolas, I want to know how to ride a horse. Then Legolas said, ok. And then Legolas said, first you get dresses and have something to eat, and then we will go for a horse ride lesson. lesson. Meanwhile, Strider and Gandalf was riding towards where Legolas lived. And then Strider said, Gandalf, I did not know Legolas had a sister. And then Gandalf said, I did not know as well. Meanwhile, at Mondor, the Dark Lord was planning to kidnap the princess, but not Legolas. Then the boss of the orcs came and said, I'll get her for you, sir! And then the Dark Lord said, Yes, you can! Meanwhile, Legolas and Lora was horse riding. And then Lora said, Legolas, who's that? And then Legolas looked, and it was Gandalf and Strider. Legolas said, That is Gandalf and Strider. And then Strider said, Legolas, and then Legolas said, Strider, long time seen. And then Strider said, How's you? And then Legolas said, I am fine. And then Gandalf said, Who's this then? And then Legolas said, Meet Lora, I found her in the woods where she was just a baby. Lora was shy at first, and then Legolas said, Lorda, come and meet Strider and Gandalf. And then Lorda said, hello, I am Lorda. Legolas said, she is the princess. And then Strider said, she is so cute. And then Legolas said, that will be my Falut. And then Gandalf said, why? And then Lorda said, he protects me, that's why. And then Legolas looked up and said, I think we should go back to the castle. And then Lorda said, I can feel it too. Legolas said, do you want to stay for a night? And then Gandalf and Strider said, yes, please. And then they had tea and went to bed. During the night, Legolas asked the guards to keep an eye on Lorda's room. Meanwhile, the orcs climbed up the window and grabbed Lorda, and then Lorda woke up and screamed, and then the guard went into, went into, went into a room and saw lots of orcs, and then Legolas ran down the hall. Then Legolas said, where is Lorda? And then the guard said, the orcs took her. Meanwhile, the orcs was back at Mondor, and then Lorda said, put me down, and then the orcs did, and then the Dark Lord came out of the fire and said, welcome Lorda, and then Lorda looked at him and said, no, it can't be, and then she tried to run away, but the orcs got her. Then the Dark Lord said, put her into the cell and get her, and also do whatever you want with her, but do not kill her. Then the orcs took her to the cell and trow her into the cell, and then they shut the door. Lorda go up and went to the window and looked out, and she was wishing that Legolas or someone will save her. Meanwhile, back at the castle of Milkwood, Legolas was letting the army ready to go and save Lorda. Meanwhile, Lorda was sitting on the floor, and then the door opened, and it was some orcs, and the orcs tied Lorda with some chains, then one of the orcs striped her, and then he raped her, and then the one said, Go away, you bastard. Then another orc came with a whip and wiped her hard, hard, hard. And then the orcs all to get her better almost to death. And then the Dark Lord came in with a tube of posy on, and then he injected into Lara a few hours later. Regulus and the others were on the way to Mondor to sit with Lara. Meanwhile, in the cell where Lara was being kept, Lara woke up and she looked on her body. There was blood and scars. She only could move her right arm, but not her. 
Then Lorna said, I feel so cold. And then she can't see very well. Uh, At the frowned gates of Mons of Mondor was Legolas and the others. And then they said, let Lorna go. And then the Dark Lord said, no. Oh, and Legolas said, right, listen. I'll wheel, 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 and get her. And you and the others will find another way in. Then Strider said, all right. And then Legolas started to climb up. Meanwhile, Strider and the others ran into Mondor and went into the castle. Gandalf said, I will go and kill the Dark Lord, and you and the others go and help Legolas. Studier said, be careful, and then Gandalf said, I will, don't you worry about me. Meanwhile, Legolas got to the cell where Lorna is. Legolas said, Lorna, are you in there? And then Lorna said, oh Legolas, you finally came. And then Legolas said, are you alright? And then Lorna said, no, I am not alright. And then Legolas said, they bet you have been raped, you also, the Dark Lord gave you the posy on. And then Lorna said, how did you do that? Then Legolas said, well, I was your age, they did the same thing to me. Then Lorna said, can you get me out of here? And then Legolas said, okay. Stand back, and then he ran back and ran towards the door and knocked it down. Uh, Lorna said, wow. And then Legolas looked and saw she was coved in blood and scars, also she was naked. And then Legolas said, why they did it to you, not me? And then the orcs came and said, because she got a power, and she can destroy us all the bad guys. And the fright began. Legolas got out his bow and arrows and started firing at them. And Legolas saw some swords and said, Strider, is that you? And then Strider said, yes, it is. And then Legolas and the others started to kill the orcs. Meanwhile, Gandalf is having, is having, is having, is having fun time trying to destroy the Dark Lord. Gandalf said, I wish Frodo and Mary and Pippin and Sam was here. And then the sword came out of nowhere and said, some wish does here. And then Gandalf turned and said, Frodo Baggins, why are you doing here? Then Frodo said, we came to help you and also we got rid of the ring. And then the Dark Lord said, Oh no! And then the magical powers from Gandalf destroyed the Dark Lord. Meanwhile, Legolas and Strider and the others was helping Lola down, and Strider took off his cape and put it around Lola. Few hours later, Legolas and the others are on the way back to the castle. Legolas said, we must go to Rivendell to get Lola better. Then Gandalf said, I think you are right. And then they turned around and went to Rivendell. Legolas looked down on Lola and put his hand onto Lola's head, and she was bruning up. Strider went to side of Legolas' horse and looked and said, She is getting woes. And then Legolas said, I know. You hours later. They were driven down and Legolas stayed Lord aside every day until she wakes up. And then Legolas gets oh, off. I'm eating a sandwich. Leave me alone. I was around Legolas and then Legolas said, oh, Legolas. Legolas said Yes, I am. And Legolas said, I am so happy. And then Lorna said, you my boyfriend. And then Legolas said, Yes, I will be your boyfriend. And then Lorna and Legolas again. And I said, what happened to me, Legolas? And then Legolas said, you got, you got, you got kidnapped by the orcs, and they raped you, and also that you almost did. And then the Dark Lord gave you some potion. And then Laura said, why? I can only move on arm. And then Legolas said, your left arm is broken. Then the door opened, and it was Strider. And then Laura said, hello, Strider. And then Strider said, I see you are awake. And then Laura... Okay. Boring. I'm moving this. The best the reading of the worst. That was getting It was a beautiful day in the bed. Oh, right. How many of you have crazy? His karate. He had a special <laughs> plan for the engineer. <laughs> Well, he was going uh, just for a little while. to be a urinal. He has a number of just a break. Break. He he had a walked to the car the and room? saw the engineer. That's the they went off to the room and began their filthy deeds. The naughty engineer was tossed to the dispenser as the sniper tossed Jirati at him. The, the shards were shoved up his ass and his dick <laughs> His urethra. <laughs> oh. He began to see blood and semen from his wound, and even at the risk of infection, the engineer continued to beg for more. The sniper then cut the rope with his jirati, I mean kukri, and began to paddle the engineer's bare ass. He shat blood all over the sniper's hand. The sniper left it all up and mauled furiously. By a spy. The glass of feces was going his mouth. He didn't care. He was with his one true love, and that was all that mattered to him. In under two hours, hours, both were coated in thick, thick, oh, thick layers of each other's bodily waste and passed out. The spy then came across the sleeping couple and took his butterfly knife and quickly in. Oh my God, that's offensive. Okay, we're starting. Two, one, I have a couple more robot you have any? Oh my god, no one else prepared. Okay, let's see. Crab has one, Crab has one. Here's a Winnie the Pooh one. Oh no, here's a Sonic one. I have a 
true story one if you guys are curious. A cat with full force. An up or out strategy is how I described it to my wife. No one's read. Mission begin. Then with stick, my dick splattered and Coulter is faced a job I enjoyed, and she, standing in her underwear, fully grasped Ronald Reagan's ever-expanding direction in 1980. I swear to God, if we play either of those maps, I'm gonna kill you. I squeezed a little tighter in my lap. But Ronald believes in the virtues of capitalism. The last I checked, four or five hours a day is indeed impressive. BJ, please, I ask. Instead, as I as I thought the local high school Mission football team's prostate, Thomas Jefferson squirted a big dollop of 100% creamy white cum in the president's hand. Want some? The president asked. Mr. President, I said, party niggers have poisoned the atmosphere, I think. Watch yourself, he said quietly, as the duty, black, white, or brown, rained down on his head. Thanks for the advice, Mr. President, I said. Three, so where does two, that leave us? One. Shit. Alert. Our control point is being captured. Dirty Peter Pan. Alert. Alert. Long black Alert. Peanuts. The Alert. control Evil. point is being contested. Red by Jim Day. Peter was the leader of the boys because he yeah. was... We already did this one, sorry. Alright, alrighty then. Yeah! Oh, that's the only time that Crave has a part of snipe for these stories. Oh. Uh. Alert! The control point is being captured. Get the heavy up the point! The class ejaculated furiously at Hermione rather than fucking girls behind long and hard, hard, hard. Snape squeezed between two enormous hearty, fat, slightly damp, moldy smelling black, black butts. And Ron beat it in Hermione's hair. I'll be 17 in two and a bit months time, said Ron grumpily, and then I'll be able to do it by magic. There was a pause while Harry continued to pound Hermione's bloody fudge which he had done several times to Ron already. Ron ejaculated, come, the size of a grapefruit. Dumbledore, stick, come, flew out of the pulsating top and whipped through the air. Crackers, said Snake. Professor Umbridge seemed to decide that she could ignore the fat cunt warts no longer. She looked as though she might have a farting seizure. Did you want to ask something uh. about the chapter, dear? She asked Hermione, as though she had only just noticed her. Not about the chapter, no, said Hermione. Well, real jerk in just now, said Professor Umbridge, showing her slightly damp, moldy smelling cunt. Harry stared at it. Ron kept spurting cum in a pool of his own poo, as though hoping to pick up ten-year-olds. If you have other queries, we can deal with them at the end of jerking off. I've got a query about sucking your bloody behind, what's said Hermione. Professor Umbridge raised her tight behind and was now shitting but explosion boom, boom, on her face. Harry touched sack wards and Ron beat it furiously in his fingers, then closed them again with a jerk. And your name is Hermione Granger, said Hermione, Whoa. jerking off Harry. Harry groaned, shooting cum on her face. Ow! Ow! Coming. Hmm, said Harry, parting in a pool of his own cum. Well, Miss Granger, I think the course aims are perfectly clear. If you hold on carefully, said Professor Umbridge, shitting on her face. S murderous Dumbledore, said Ron angrily, sucking his cum. You whack! When I'm 17, I'm going to stick this sprout. Well, I don't, said Hermione bluntly. There's nothing written up there about using defensive cuntwort spells. An enormous fat tit, said Harry, tugging very hard on it. He, he hardened instantly. Dumbledore was watching him and was now sucking on it long and hard. I don't like fat girls much, said Harry, who could not think what else to say. 
It was not the sucking that intrigued him. He had watched Malfoy stuffed into a miniature tutu do that to Snape for a long time. It was the fact that Snape did, uh, after all, murder Dumbledore. Right, just really I really thought there might be something going Everybody on between them, yeah. said Hermione. Oh, he's the world's biggest faggot, said Snape. There was a short silence in which Ron ejaculated come with a little laugh. You see, defensive spells, Professor Umbridge repeated. Why? I can't who. The constipation sensation that's gripping the nation. You surely aren't expecting to be touched during class. We're not going to jerk it. Students raise their hands when they wish to speak in my class, Mr. Ugly little man, said Ron, frowning <laughs> from his mother's blood so titted in his mouth. Professor Umbridge, smiling still more widely, fucking ejaculated on him. Ron, on the other hand, pleased himself. Hermione ejaculated. Ron ejaculated. Harry groaned. Harry drew closer to Hermione and said, Golden shower. Hermione raised her eyebrows. Pass me a ball, said Hermione. Professor Umbridge ejaculated on Harry for a moment with a look of disgust on her face. Meanwhile, Ron, who was attempting to burst by putting both hands on it, standing up and squashing it as hard as he could and wiping cum from his face, sopping wet but still grinning, said angrily, Who wants eggnog? Don't be squeamish, bish. Squeeze it out best when fresh, said Professor Umbridge. Harry could feel flecks of tweed spray hitting his face, with his glasses splattered with Dumbledore's cum. The flow of golden shower seemed to ease. Snape had burst furiously in Hermione's hair. Harry turned to face him, frowning. No. You think I'm gay, though? Yeah, I do! <laughs> said oh, Snape hastily. Yes, Miss Granger, you wanted to ask something else? Yes! said Hermione. Surely the whole point of defense against the black is to practice defensive counterward spells? Are you a Ministry trained educational expert, Miss Granger? asked Professor Umbridge in a falsely sweet voice. No, that failed me. I'm afraid you're not qualified to decide what the whole point of any class is. Blacks, much older and cleverer than you, have devised our new program of study. Ron ejaculated, Harry opened his mouth and swallowed. Harry felt bloody cum bubbling in the pit of his stomach. You will be learning about defensive spells in a secure, risk-free way. Professor Umbridge ejaculated, Dumbledore, Dumbledore, corpses! What use is that? Said Harry loudly, tugging very hard on that. If we're going to be attacked, it won't be in a... Hand, Mr. Potter, sang Professor Umbridge. Harry thrust his fist in Hermione. Harry Potter, said Hermione angrily. Is that all boys care about? Harry thrust his fist in Hermione again. <coughs> Ron ejaculated through his butt with yeah, Dumbledore right. watching him, sucking up goblets of party cum. Harry and Hermione immediately joined in enthusiastically, tugging very hard on it to extricate nice. his sperm. Go. Harry could smell party black, but, but, Professor Umbridge promptly ejaculated again. Snake Holmes stumbled off. But now several other people had ejaculated fucking goblets of party shit pulsating cum. Bloody fat that explosion, just like Neville's fat. Five, four, three, two, one! Harry swallowed unusually large ball sack. Hermione, who had hastily packed her tight fudge, was now sucking on it happily. Oh, it was quite fun, really, said Hermione, while Harry continued to pound Hermione's bloody fudge. Snape destroys Dumbledore. Dumbledore hardened instantly. And your name is? Professor Umbridge said to Tit. Ron ejaculated, Tit Thomas. Well, Mr. Thomas? Well, it's like Harry said, isn't it? Said Tit. If we're going to be attacked, it won't be too big. I repeat, said Professor Umbridge, smiling in a very irritating fashion at Tit. One ejaculated. How much free time do you have to have to go through the entire, like, book series of Harry Potter? Well, you, 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 that, you know, to say some words he doesn't really say, he just takes silver. You know? For example, Another one is Bill Chapel. 
Let's see who's the. Is it Muffin or whatever your name is? You might. You don't like me talking about Jim Dale, right? Yeah. Right here. We have lost control point. That's what her name oh, means. Okay. Dirty Pooh, 100 acre shit pile. No, but I'm no. Dirty Potter. Read for you for by Jim Day. Chapter 1 In which Rabbit sucks almost everything right in his ass, and a stupid black nigger goes in bed. It was a perfect summer day, and the forest was sparkling. It was July. The animals were very excited. They were playing a game called Licking the Massive Bean. Enormous black fat boner pee. All the animals sat on the ground and round and masturbated on Piglet's face. I won the game, said Piglet. Was some pretty nasty stuff in the hundred acre wood. Pooh was staring at his large, sucking no. direction. No. He had never felt so horny in his entire life. life. Piglet, said Pooh. Oh yes, Pooh, said Piglet. I wonder where Christopher Robin has been. Just at that moment, there was a whirring sound, and a clickety sound, and a pinging sound, and a pooping sound, and a pucking sound, and a gulping sound, and a farting sound, and a shitting sound, and a pissing yes, sound, and a tapping sound, and a rapping yeah, yeah, good sound, and a burping sound, and a crunching sound, and a, um, a pinging sound, and a uh, pinging sound, and a pirate sound, and, uh, and there he was. Christopher Robin, just as he had always been, except that he was fat. He looked at them all and said, Good morning, nigger. Then Christopher Robin led the animals back to his house. There, 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 they had many hot and tight torches. And it made you feel good just to look at it, and made you want to rub one off to it. Christopher Robin was polishing his disgust in one eye. Someone tell me when Crave is done with the way the way the arrived. Come indoors, Pooh, and Piglet, and Owl, and Tigger, and Eeyore, and Panda, and Pooh, and Christopher Robin, said Christopher Robin, because I have something to show you all, and it's something very big indeed. When Christopher Robin had finished wiping the dollops of spoon off his fingers and onto his handkerchief, and off his handkerchief and back onto his fingers, and off his finger thing in his mouth, he handed Pooh the piece of paper. I won this at school, he said, for teasing the trout and shooting crunches more than 50 yards. Piglet gaped open mouth at the sight of this feet. But it's bigger than I am, worried Piglet. Christopher Robin rubbed it. He had had it himself, and Christopher Robin said to Pooh, I hate no not a peanut peanut such a too surprisingly tasty testings, so I don't have room for the very fat, hokey more sexy, bull bike midget Jewish handicap, not the nigger dick. I wondered, Pooh, whether you would be kind enough to eat it for me. And Pooh was kind enough. Robin is craving to eat himself. Very much. Eeyore looked down at Piglet's potted meat cork. Oh, crisp and juicy. We have a lot the crunchiness and fullness of flavor. There is nothing to beat Piglet. Very fine purple penis. There was a very long pause. My goodness, said Christopher Robin, looking at Eeyore. It's nearly time for a donkey punch. Then Christopher Robin beat his fucking fist in Eeyore's face. So violently that he ejaculated a golden nice shower of spring. Oh, I'm going to up on super. I'm going to just go for the red thing so I'm going to swing around. You probably thought this was funny. But it isn't at all. Ever. I'm so done with this bullshit. You're just fucking gay faggots. And probably read hard. Listen to stupid fucking recycled bullshit from Dirty Potter like this is fail. You still shake your fucking hands and kill yourself instantly. Um.
<coughs> Meanwhile, these were the presents Christopher Robin had brought for the other animals. For himself, his own cum, which they slurped before it turned dry and crusty. For Owl, a test in case, in case he lost his test. It's kind of a random question, oh, well, It would take too long to explain. For Piglet, two fat, wet pink pussies. And a moldy penis. And it smelled a bit of moldy penis. For Roo, a bottle of magic mushrooms for his first day at school. For Kanga, a set of seven rubbery cocks, one for each day of the week. Eeyore did not know what the cock was what or what it did, but it sounded necessary. For Tigger, a pogo stick. The buckle. For Rabbit, a book called, 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 one useful hints for spraying Christopher Robin with rich, damp, shit. For Eeyore, another huge asshole for farting through his front and back. And that's really difficult. For Pooh, water sports for removing the dirty poop from his, from his bloody fucking bear. After that, the animals settle, 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 ever seen in the hundred acre wood. A huge mound, mound of poop and shit. Fresh pre corby fun, tune, 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 rounded, 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 by old cheese. The turtle. which proved to pick it on the day, which started like any other day, in a very serious, serious day indeed.